Welcome back, everyone. I've got a short clip that is predictive, very insightful, as this man always is. It's the PBD podcast. He gets right to the point. Uh, and uh, he, he has some uh, thoughts about observing Trump and a close confidant of Trump he was speaking to today and uh, who made some points about how Trump thinks, how his mind works, and he's so sharp and ahead of the game. And we, we saw this, lest people forget very, very quickly, <laughs> uh, that Trump started to turn the economy around right after getting elected, before he was inaugurated. He traveled all over to get companies to come back to America and to get them to not leave America. Uh, he turned the economy around and uh, there was a 40 year high, more minorities, more blacks, minorities, women, uh, as well as men, were in the workforce, went back to the workforce than any other time in history. He did more for minorities and women than any other president ever has, and very, very quickly. And you wonder, under the Mueller investigation, which turns out to be um, a hoax, the dossier, was paid for by a certain losing candidate. Uh, there was a hoax, despite all that, and all the money that he put into paying lawyers uh, because of all these false allegations. He still did more for the country, more for America, and keeping peace in the world than any other president ever has. He was too good, and he exposed our leaders. He exposed them as money-hungry and power-hungry. They just want to stay in office forever, get the money, have the power, and do nothing. And Trump made fools of them by showing everyone, do you see how quickly all these things can get fixed? Do you see how quickly? But 2020 was quite imaginative. In three years time, despite everything that was thrown at him, look at what he did. In, in 2020, everything hit the fan, which I find interesting and I will not remark on at this moment. But anyway, let's listen. I'm gonna cut my mic. I have a thought. I have a thought on what's going to happen. But before I give you that, can you play the clip of him walking into the court? 25 second clip. Can you just show this? Just look at his mannerisms. Look at his eyes. President Trump. Will you come speak to us? President Trump. Oh, my God. They just played the clip on loop on loop. Let me loop. just tell you. If he. Is who, there's our friend uh, Jason yeah. Miller over there. Get from uh, what's it, Getter? What was it called? Yeah, uh, Getter. If you, he's right there with Trump. If, if you if you think Miller about how he's wired, if you think about how he's wired, okay, mm -hmm. which is coming after you. Do you know what this guy is thinking right now? Think about what he's thinking right now. Think about what he's thinking right now. They publicly humiliate. Let me tell you, like for me. Okay, let me tell you for me. You may beat this guy. He's got five kids. He's got five kids. He's got grandkids. This bloodline of Trump is not going away. They just effed up for 80 years is what they just messed up with. Not 10 years, not 20 years, 80 years. For 80 years, you're going to have, have to hear this last name. 80 years. And there's only one strategy you can use to prevent that name from 
coming up left and right. And you know what that strategy is. So try to do that with Kennedy, okay, with that strategy. But this one's not going to go away for a minute because Trump is more like Joseph Kennedy and he's like John F. Kennedy. I don't know if you know the difference, Tom. You know, obviously, John, jo Joseph Kennedy was Absolutely. the guy that you feared vengeance. I'm coming after you. I'm going to come. Versus John F. Kennedy was the guy that never wanted to be a president. He was the younger brother with, with the back problems, and he had he had health issues. And his older brother, who was a pilot, who was supposed to be the one that was supposed to be the president, and he was the guy that the day his older son died, Joseph Kennedy went into depression for a few years. And then all of a sudden, the younger son is like, I'm going to venge. I'm going to come. And then boom, John F. Kennedy and then RFK. And then boom. The difference here is the father, Joseph Kennedy, equals Trump. Exactly. And Trump is the president. To show you how tough it was, skip everything you I'm just going to skip over what this gentleman has to say uh, because he actually goes off point and then Patrick comes back on and gives you some insight. He was talking to a Trump confidant today, not Trump. And the Trump confidant uh, spoke about how the subjects that he talked about with Trump and how his mind works. And this is how this is how amazing he is uh, and how he was able to get so much done. It's because that's, they call him stupid, but if you're stupid, you can't your mind cannot think like this. It cannot cannot hold uh, like my mind. <laughs> can hold many trains of thought at the same time. He is extremely intelligent and he also got, he went to Ivy League school and he got higher marks than John Kerry. But then again, Bush Jr. got higher marks than, I mean, John Kerry, did I say John Kerry? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> lurch, lurch. But anyway, listen to what he says and you will understand just how great this guy's mind really is and tough this guy is. And nobody compares to him. I understand there's been some oppo research that came put out by the Dems against DeSantis. And I think that's interesting because I heard John Solomon talking about, he was a former prosecutor, now he's a commentator. And he said the, the reason why they are doing this to Trump a long time ago, he said this, it could be because they want Trump to be the nominee and they don't really want to run against DeSantis, so they're doing this to kick DeSantis out. Uh, so if that's the case, so they're running opposition research on DeSantis, but DeSantis is backed by the Bushes and Karl Rove there. He's the chief strategist of the Bushes. And we know that here's the interesting, another interesting point is that the Bushes are good friends with the Clintons. They summer together. And during the, uh, on election night, uh, Michelle Obama was sitting on Bush's lap and laughing, they, they're they good friends with the Obamas. The, and they're all, they all belong to that particular New World Order group that I won't name. And Trump is the only person who went there and told them all off the most powerful, uh, feared, strongest leaders in the world. He went there just to tell them off. Don't you think? There's reason for not just uh, the rhinos and the Dems and the progressives to hate him, but the whole world, because the whole world wants, the leaders of the whole world want to own the whole world. And we are nothing but useless eaters and lower than bugs because the locusts 
which are grasshoppers, they came and they ate the crops in Egypt, right? So you got to feed the locusts. So we, the useless eaters, will eat the locust, which means we're lower than bugs. So Trump going there and telling them off, knowing no one is on your side and everybody's gunning at you, that is guts, that is strength, that is a fighter. And DeSantis is bought by the bushes. And if he's bought by the bushes, you know, and the bushes are friends with the Clintons and the Obamas, you know whose side DeSantis is on. You know it. Okay, let's continue. And I'll cut my mic. Well, obviously, we're, we're speculating. We're just repeating mm -hmm. history, guys. We're not saying anything here. I don't want anybody to jump to conclusion. All no, but we're this saying is what is, the mob said. If yeah, that was a strategy exactly. that they identified with that because they were scared but, of Joe. But, but here's the thing with this. You know, I, I talked to a guy who just had a conversation with Trump earlier today. Okay? Won't give the name. He says... We had a call, and we, we had to talk 14 different issues together. And he's been a friend of his for a long time. And this is not Giuliani, by the way. He's been a friend of his for a long time. And he said, it's wild how this guy at this age can compartmentalize 14 different issues. He says, in a 26-minute conversation, we talked about 14 different issues, and he was sharp on every single one of them while he's dealing with this. Hmm. So what are we going to do with Are we going to do this? Call this guy. What are we going to do with it? He's like, he is so flipping sharp. Meaning, do you try to hire this guy out? He's not there yet. Okay, this is a guy that may be living into his 90s. Okay, the way he is, right? Perfect, no problem. But Tom, there is a different, maybe, maybe, maybe it's different with the kid. I woke up when somebody called out my dad. I woke up when somebody called out my dad. I'm just a party guy. You embarrass my dad? Game over. For the rest of your life, you're going to have to deal with me, right? Those five kids and the grandkids are watching this saying, you did that to my papa? You did that to my dad? No problem. You have to deal with me for decades. So again, you win the battle, but this type of an event, first time in the history of America that you're doing this, you're humiliating the last name. You may have just woke up a giant and it isn't who you think it is. Uh, anyways, quick, quick final fact thoughts check, before we wrap way. up. Here. This is the second time this. Okay. Please share. Please like. I'm going to leave a link to this entire podcast if you want to listen to more of this man. And I want to add that tomorrow night, I'm going to have a live stream on prayer, on how to, how to obtain or how to get God into your heart, to call God, to call the Holy Spirit into your heart, into your being, and feel the presence of God's love stirring in you, filling you giving you life and hope and power at all times. We can do it. We are God's children. God is the only king, and we are God's children. So we are all royal children. God loves us, and God wants us to eternally feel his love within us at all times. If we are connected to God and have this strength, no matter what demons are ruling this world, we can get through it. And we have the road and the path to heaven immediately because God's presence living within us feeling God's presence. We know exactly where to go. We will never be lost. I'll be reading out of Isaiah as well and discussing uh, the meanings uh, 
of the message of Isaiah. It's one of my most beloved books of the whole Bible. So please share it, like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll try to do more of these. I can do stuff like this. Now the internet is coming in a little bit better. I wasn't even able to do this, but I can do these uh, more often. So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining in. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Wake up with the sunshine. Wake up with hope, knowing God is within you and loves you. And I will see you again soon. And may truth and justice and love prevail. Good night.